Well, hello, Maria. It is great to have you on my podcast. Welcome to the Girlfriend Doctor podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Now, I know that you have been living in Dubai for the last year, and I, that's just fascinating. So going from New York City to Dubai, and especially being the healthy cook, how has New York cooking changed or Dubai cooking differed from, from uh, New York cooking? So you won't believe this, but I have access to more healthy and organic food here in Dubai than I did in New York. So I, uh, I found this incredible farm here. There's an organic farm in the middle of the desert that grows over 140 different varieties of heirloom produce. Mm -hmm. And for like produce nerds like myself, this is really exciting because the heirloom vegetables are, uh, they're typically more flavorful and you just get all these different interesting varieties of produce. There's so many different types of tomatoes and kale and peppers. And so that's been really fun. I order and I get this organic farm delivery to my door once a week. So that's been great. And I've really kept up most of my, uh, the, the way that I cooked in New York. I still cook over here a lot. I love cooking. I feel like cooking is one of the best ways that we can nourish our body. And I, I will say when I was growing up, cooking, my mom would view cooking as a chore and it was something that she really didn't want to do. We would always order takeout. And, uh, you know, that's how I felt about cooking for a really long time. But as I got a little bit older and, and in college and started dealing with all of these health issues that I eventually realized were diet related, cooking became the way that I could heal myself. And so I studied it and, and learned more and practice. And uh, it takes a little while to get to get the hang of it. And you know, you'll you will have uh, your blender, whatever's in your blender, on your ceiling, and uh, you'll probably burn yourself. And you know, there'll be some mishaps. But once you get the hang of it, like cooking, really for me now, it's a it's a moving meditation in a way. It's a way for me to de stress at the end of the day. And nothing nothing is better than a home cooked meal. Well, I think what I love about your approach is that you do really make things easy and fun and, you know, just so nourishing. So let's start at the beginning, like planning our meal, choosing the groceries, like how would you walk someone through, say, for example, I mean, and things are, things are challenging right now, right? We don't necessarily have access to going to the grocery store every day, nor do we want to. So we want to stock up as well on as much of the healthy stuff as we can. So, um, you know, get us started, get us started on our, our, our meal prep for, um, you know, the best, healthiest way possible, you know, kind of in our keto yeah. green lifestyle to, um, to make it easy Definitely. for us and delicious and delicious, Maria. Of I always course. love, I always, like, I can, I'm addicted to food cooking shows. I am. <laughs> They're, they're, and they're I, really fun to watch. Oh, and I love your cooking class because you make it easy and fun and it's just perfect. So we'll, we'll give our audience a link to your cooking class. I just love it. And, um, but yeah, get us, get us started. Sure, sure. So whenever you're thinking, I also, I, I don't want to go to the grocery store every day. I don't even want to go multiple times a week. And honestly, I'd rather order it all online. So if you have uh, the ability to order things online, uh, then take it. It just makes your life so much easier. So what I would say is think about which meals that you're having home. Obviously now probably all of your meals are home, but in general, you want to think about, okay, what dinners, what lunches, what breakfast, how many meals do I need to cook for? And then I would say it's a great idea to keep a repertoire of recipes that you really like. And to really do it so that you don't have waste, I would think about, okay, Monday night, I'm going to have this Tuesday night, we're going to have this Wednesday night, we're going to have that. And having that structure, especially for someone who's not very comfortable in the kitchen yet, or is not used to cooking a lot at home, having the structure and knowing what you're going to make when will give you a lot more confidence and you'll feel more calm. You'll know exactly what to get at the grocery store. So it just makes your life a lot easier if you can take 20, 30 minutes on the weekend, let's say, and plan out what meals that you want for the week. Then grocery shopping. And what I recommend is that you get a mix of produce that will last you the entire week. So things like your dark leafy greens, 
those are a bit more perishable. And so sometimes they'll make it to the end of the week, depending on when it was picked, but sometimes they won't. So definitely stock up on uh, as many dark leafy greens as you can for the beginning of the week, but then make sure that for the end of the week, you also have some produce that lasts quite long. I actually just did a post on this on Instagram, the, the produce that lasts the longest, things like cabbage, things like uh, winter squashes, um, citrus. Uh, so there, there's many different uh, types of produce that will last you to the end of the week. So you want to make sure you have a little mix of both, um, your broccoli, your bok choy, things like that that will last to the end of the week. And then you have those, you know, on Thursday, Friday, etc. You can also look at frozen. I think that frozen foods sometimes people don't think are very healthy. And in fact, a lot of frozen food is not. But if you're just getting frozen vegetables, let's say frozen, you can get frozen dark leafy greens, which you can put in a smoothie, um, or you can get frozen uh, vegetables that you can steam or add to different dishes. I also really like getting broccoli rice or cauliflower rice, which is just cauliflower or broccoli that has been put through a food processor and it's in these little nice rice-like sized pieces and it's just so easy to cook especially during the week you you know you get home from work you don't really want to do anything if you can just put some uh, salmon actually I also love frozen seafood that's another way to make sure you always have fresh food on hand one thing people don't realize about seafood seafood is that about 70% of the fresh seafood you see at the counter has actually been previously frozen. So you can save money and gain convenience by buying your seafood frozen. You always have it in your freezer. It, you can defrost it in about 20, 30 minutes in a bowl of cold water. And uh, yeah, it just makes it a lot more convenient. So you can throw in a piece of salmon with some nice spices on top and uh, stir fry a little bit of the, uh, some, let's say cauliflower rice with some garlic and spices. And you have a really delicious meal on your table in about 15 to 20 minutes. I love that. You know, one thing that I found, which is so easy, because you just, I buy the cauliflower heads, the organic cauliflower heads. And that is one vegetable that I typically always buy. If I can find it organic, I always buy it organic. And um, cauliflower is just so delicious. It is so delicious, Maria. But I have gotten in the habit now, I just buy the head of cauliflower. I just take off the stems parts. I'll save those for my bone broth. And I throw the whole cauliflower head in with just like about an inch of water into my, um, my pressure cooker. And then I'll either just drain out that extra water or um, uh, mash it up to either be you know, like almost the consistency of rice, a little bit thick, or make it a buttery you know, cauliflower mashed potato type of situation. Ooh. It's my favorite. It is that my sounds favorite. sounds so good. Yeah, cauliflower is so versatile. I, I use it. I always have it in my grocery cart or my delivery every every single week. And from cauliflower rice, which you can also make yourself, you could just throw yours in the fruit processor and make it. Uh, what you talked about, the cauliflower mash is really delicious when you want something a bit more creamy. You can simply slice it and roast it. I love adding turmeric and cumin and all these delicious spices to it and roasting it. Uh, so you can turn it in into a pizza crust, you can turn it into crackers, like you can turn cauliflower into just about anything. So it's, it's a great food to always have on hand. Yes. And in one of your Instagram pictures that I love, you're doing veggie noodles. Can you talk about that yes. too? And then you do that at, you teach this in your cooking school. Yes. So I find that there are certain people, I mean, I didn't, did not grow up liking vegetables. In fact, I did not eat a vegetable besides French fries and tomato sauce on pizza until I was about 18 years old. And now I'm this veggie queen who's, you know, helping people eat more vegetables. And uh, one, one way that I found helps people eat more vegetables is to turn them into something that looks like spaghetti. And that's just simply, you can spiralize your veggies like zucchini, for example. You can spiralize beets or uh, carrots. Really, really anything that has like a bulb type shape, you can spiralize and you get these nice noodles. They're really quick and easy to cook. They take about five to seven minutes to saute and you can add whatever spices you want. You can 
turn them into, let's say, a veggie pad thai if you wanted to. You could put them in a Thai curry. Uh, you could just saute them with some garlic and olive oil or spices. There's so many ways that you can use them. You could also use them like traditional pasta. So if you're really craving pasta, uh, you know, you could put tomato sauce on it or you can put... Uh, a basil pesto on it, for example. So it feels like you're going to be twirling your fork as if you're eating spaghetti, but you're eating, let's say, zucchini noodles. And uh, it's really just a great fun swap to, uh, to get some more veggies into your diet and do it more deliciously. I, I love it too. So, you know, what are some of the foods that you think are the healthiest foods on the planet? Definitely. I'm on the same page with you. The dark leafy greens and cruciferous veggies. These are foods that I think should be on our plate every single day. Uh, they're some of the most nutrient dense foods. They provide our body with the antioxidants and uh, ca plant chemicals that we need. Uh, they also provide fiber, which is really great for regularity and digestion. They also fill us up you know, I grew up eating a lot of processed and refined foods and anyone who, who's been there with me uh, eating a standard American diet, you notice that you're, you're always hungry. You're never full. You always want to eat more. Mm -hmm. And these foods have the opposite effect. They are going to fill you up and they're going to turn your hunger off. So uh, the, these are foods that we want on our plate every single day. And uh, yeah, I would say those are probably the top two to make sure that we're, we're eating consistently. And of course, cruciferous veggies include things like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, um, bok choy, radishes. So there's, you have a lot of variety there. You know, when I, I love that. I love all those foods. And thanks for like, you know, reinforcing that with my audience. I think I've, I've hoped to have convinced you. And if not, you will be convinced by the end of our podcast today. And uh, everyone will be convinced by the end of our podcast today. So Maria, one thing too, that I talk about a lot is, you know, I always say 10% fasting, 80% keto green, 10% feasting. And you also give some fabulous feasting recipe. What are some low carb, feasting recipes that, that, um, that you love, that you love to incorporate into your diet and that you recommend. I've been just because I, I have on my mind, I have this mm -hmm. app, I call it my apple pie Bible verse quote. It's from second Peter, um, uh, um, chapter four, I think it's chapter uh, one for four through verses four through 11. Anyway, I call it my apple pie verse because it starts with faith and to faith add knowledge and to knowledge add goodness. And I always say like, you know, and it goes on from there, but you know, we, I talk about making an apple pie. So I've been, I've been talking about this verse a lot and I just want to make a keto apple pie. And I was thinking, <laughs> couldn't we do like some, like, could we like, use some like zucchini and cabbage with some apples so to decrease the amount of apples like <laughs> help me <Yeah>. come up with <laughs> some things. so you know actually I have this old uh old recipe from a couple years ago I, I called it crustless apple pie and essentially what it was it was some sliced apples that I stewed like cooked down in a little bit of coconut oil and cinnamon and I just stewed it down until they got soft and I stuck it in a beautiful parfait glass and then put a dollop of coconut whipped cream, which is just literally coconut milk that's been chilled, uh, put that on top and, and had that with some more cinnamon on top. So that would probably be the closest. Oh, that, uh, yes. Yeah. And you know, you don't even need the crust or, you know, it's just, first of all, with apple pie, it's all the cinnamon. That's actually what you're tasting. And this is something I actually talk about in my course spices are so important when we're cooking because mm -hmm. ultimately yes. that's what you're tasting. The, the, the spices and the texture, those two things, if you can get them right, you could eat anything, anything, you can make anything taste good. So yeah, so that's one, one idea. I'm also thinking I have a recipe for keto brownies, which are absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it uses just a little bit of monk fruit. Uh, as as a sweetener. And uh, I love monk fruit, pure monk fruit. It's really important if you are going to use any type of sweetener, uh, like monk fruit or stevia, that you do get the pure version of it instead of the versions that have this added uh, added ingredients so that you can 
uh, replace your sugar one-to-one in recipes. I find just using the little, you know, a couple scoops of the pure monk fruit powder is my favorite way to add a little sweetness without the sugar or carbs. And uh, yeah, and on like stevia, I like monk fruit because I, it doesn't really have an aftertaste. Uh, yes, I love that. Um, you know, I think monk fruit, I've used monk fruit in my keto green smoothie and um, keto alkaline smoothie powders. And I, I love that. Also, cocoa in general is so good for you, right? That is a super, a super food. Like I have to find my research to support my vices. <laughs> Yeah, cocoa cocoa is great. Uh, you know, I think that uh, for those who are highly sensitive to caffeine, you just don't you don't want to overdo it because it is a source of caffeine. But I feel like a little a, you you do need a little bit of play, like you said, ten percent feasting. You you don't want to cut everything out uh, if you don't need to, and I think there's definitely room for some fun foods in our in our diet if we're we're just being mindful about it and and doing it uh, the right way. Yes, yeah, I agree, I agree, um, and I think that mindfulness is really important that we're focusing on um, the quality and the flavor and just the gratitude with, you know, what we get to enjoy in our meals and that we're making them as nutritious as possible. And I think that's is so important why I wanted to get you on to my podcast at this time is really about making it delicious and nourishing so that we can look forward, you know, look forward to our meals. But plus food is medicine. Food is medicine. And this is something you always talk about too, Maria, how using it to treat brain fog, to help with energy and why what we eat really, really matters. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, one thing that's um, really interesting about cooking is that though, and that specifically cooking uh these healthy foods is that the way that we cook them can actually change the nutritional value. So for example, one tip um, that I like to give that I talk about in my course is with garlic. Mm -hmm. Garlic is one of the healthiest ingredients that we can add to our foods. And we know there's a ton of research on garlic and these amazing health benefits. It's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. It's being studied for anti-cancer properties, uh, right? Uh, Antimicrobial properties. And what the research shows is that if we just chop a piece of garlic and we throw it into a hot pan, we're going to be degrading this compound called allicin, which is created when we chop or crush garlic. So you notice if you just have your clove of garlic, it doesn't smell like garlic yet. It's not until you crush it or chop it that that beautiful garlic aroma comes out. And you'll notice also like a little bit of a liquid oily type substance comes out. What's happening is two chemicals are combining to create a compound called allicin. And this compound is the uh, the component of garlic that is believed to give it many of its health benefits. And so what the research shows is that if you chop your garlic and you let it sit out for 10 minutes, and then you add it to the pan, it actually develops this heat protective property so that when you do throw it into the hot pan, you still uh, you'll still get that compound and you'll still get all the health benefits. So there's just interesting things like that. Uh, even when we're cooking meat, how do you make the meat healthier? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many little tips and tricks in terms of making sure that our food is uh, as nutritious as it can be and also as tasty. And, and so two questions. So you said how you make the meat healthier. Tell me about that. Yeah, so there's some interesting research on meat and rosemary and that if you cook, we know that grilled meats, uh, when, when, whenever we grill meat, it creates something called ages or advanced glycation end products. And just like the name ages, they, they age us internally. And what the research shows is that if you marinate your meat or cook your meat with rosemary, it actually reduces the amount of ages that are formed when you cook your meat. So that's another really simple tip whenever you're cooking meat, especially you know grilling, uh, definitely use rosemary in the marinade or just put it on top when it's cooking and those uh, those oils, those essential oils from the rosemary will seep in and help to keep the, the meat a little bit healthier. 
I love that tip. That sounds great. And rosemary is so easy to grow and it grows all year round and it's such a beautiful aroma. Um, you know, there's so many good things about rosemary and I definitely love to put it just even sprigs of it on you know, food when I'm baking, whether it's fish mm. or meat, but definitely meat, that savory flavor. Yeah. And herbs are great. I love herbs. This is another uh, type of food that I'm always ordering every single week. And I like to throw herbs on just about anything and everything. They go well with everything and they add a really great fresh flavor. So when you are cooking with herbs, it's a good idea to reserve them for last. That's why you'll usually see them as a garnish. You don't really want to cook them too long. You could, but then they also turn like a dark, muddy color and you lose some of the flavor. So it's best to throw your fresh herbs on just as you finish cooking the dish and it'll just add this nice burst of flavor. Uh, and I always tell people, very often people will buy fresh herbs for one recipe that calls for a couple of tablespoons of parsley or cilantro, and then the rest of the bunch will just go bad in their fridge. But don't, don't let it go bad. You can throw herbs in anything. In salads, they're great. Uh, any You could put, put it on top of any sort of stir-fried vegetables. You can put it on top of your seafood. You can put it, make a chimichurri sauce if you're having meat. Like There's so many ways that you can use them. So don't ever let your herbs go bad. Just throw them on whatever you're cooking that week. I love it. And, and talking about that, we can freeze those too, right? You could just cut them off the and just put them in a Ziploc and freeze it. Yes, exactly. And uh, another tip, because I also hate, I hate food waste. I just feel so bad if I ever have to throw something away at the end of the week because it went bad. So another tip to, to prevent that is if you do have some produce, let's say that that is about to go bad and you're not going to get to it, then what you can do is you can prepare it and cook it, turn it into a soup, for example, uh, or just wash, peel and get it ready to go and then put it in a Ziploc or airtight container and freeze it. And then that will that will prolong its uh, its shelf life. Very nice. And what about like cooking vegetables, like freezing, like we cleaned up, we're doing food prep yesterday. I'm, uh, and, you know, with Sunday, Sunday food prep, food prep. And so, you know, preparing kales and scallions and cabbage, is there anything we shouldn't like clean, prep and freeze? Is there any vegetables, for instance? Well, the, the key the key thing, even when you're refrigerating or, or freezing, you have to make sure your produce is bone dry. You do not want to put wet kale or dark leafy greens back into the fridge or freezer because they will expire faster. So the best way to, uh, like if you want to prep things first, which I do think is a good idea, use a salad spinner and let them dry out on some, some dish towels. Make sure everything's really, really dry before you put it in back into the fridge or freezer just to make sure that it's going to taste the best and that it will last the longest. Perfect. Perfect. That is so good. So what do you want people to know during this stressful time, Maria, that, you know, this uncertain time with whatever we're facing, what are some key um, principles that you want people to know right now to embrace? I think, I think number one is don't let this stress and anxiety over what's going on overcome you. I think it's really important. I know I talk a lot about food and cooking, but, you know, in all my years of coaching and working with people, um, you know, our emotional and mental health is just as important, if not more so, than the physical things that we're doing. So I would say, number one, make sure you're doing things to manage your stress, whether that means turning off the news or meditating, breathing, uh, exercising, dancing, whatever you can do to offload some of that stress. I think first and foremost, that's really important. And then secondarily, we can boost our immune system and boost our physical health through, through the foods that we're eating. So I think it is really important to, at this time, to make sure we're eating enough of our dark leafy greens and our vegetables and cruciferous vegetables, um, healthy proteins, healthy fats, uh, intermittent fasting, all of these things that are good 
even, you know, all, all year long, we want to make sure that we're really doing them, especially now in this time where there's a lot of uncertainty. Also limiting sugar, limiting or eliminating sugar and refined carbohydrates, again, is something that's great all year round, but especially now just to, again, to keep our immune system really strong. And, you know, I, I actually did an Instagram live the other day on uh, cooking, cooking comfort food, healthified comfort food, because, you know, I get it. People are stressed and sometimes you just, you want something that's not a grilled salmon and broccoli. Mm -hmm. And I think that's okay. I think there's a way that you can healthify just about anything and, uh, you know, make it using keto principles um, or paleo principles. And uh, yeah, so seek out, you know, if you want a, a little bit of a more fun recipe, comfort food recipe, if you're craving something, seek out one that's, uh, that's a little bit healthier. That's let's say dairy free or gluten free, whatever you need to support your health and your body, you can find a healthier version of it. I love it. And it, before we were talking, we were talking about how to make broccoli delicious. <laughs> yes, yes. And broccoli is delicious. It's delicious if you cook it right. I'll say when I was growing up, I did not like broccoli because my mom used to steam it to the point of extinction, basically. Like it didn't even hold its shape anymore. It was so overdone and pale at that point. So don't oversteam your veggies. I think those are probably the, like oversteamed veggies have probably turned so many people away from vegetables. So definitely avoid that. But if you cook if you cook anything uh, at the right temperature, use the right spices, it'll taste good. So with broccoli, honestly, the two ways that I love to make it are I do like a quick stir fry or saute where I just put a little bit of olive oil, garlic, and maybe some spices, maybe turmeric, and I'll saute that on the stovetop. Or I like to roast it. And I roast it at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit for, depending on how small you chop it, this is something I teach in my course with cooking. Uh, the, the length of time it takes to cook something is also going to be dependent on how you prepare that food. And when it comes to veggies, everybody loves roasted veggies. They're so great. They have this nice caramelized flavor, but they can take a really long time if you chop them big. So the, the hack to roast veggies during the week and make them cook quicker is to just chop the pieces smaller and they'll cook quicker. So you can really just roast broccoli in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, just till it just starts to get a little golden brown. It's nice and crisp still. And yeah, those are my two, my two favorite ways to, to cook it. I thank you. Thank you for sharing those tips with us. Now, Maria, tell our audience how they can get a hold of you. And I'm going to provide links to your cooking school, which I just love in our show notes. So I would encourage my audience to join me in Maria Marlowe's cooking school. And if you could tell us a little bit about that and then where to find you. Sure. So I created my cooking school because I found that I was telling people to eat more vegetables, eat your gre leafy greens, eat your cruciferous vegetables. And then they're like, okay, but I don't know what to do with them. Like, how do I, how do I incorporate more of these into my diet? And I, I noticed that I know in New York, coming from New York where everybody eats out, we're not really taught how to cook. Nobody really knows how to cook. And uh, a lot of people were scared of the produce section. So I wanted to create a course, just a little fun mini course that will help people become more confident in the kitchen, familiar with different cooking techniques, how to properly wash your foods, how to properly cook them so that they maximize the nutrition and flavor. And, and just overall, like how do you get really confident in the kitchen so that you can cook a healthy meal any night of the week. So that's why I created my uh, online cooking course. And you can find it at mariamarlo.com. And Marlo has a W-E at the end. And it's mariamarlo.com forward slash cooking dash school. So you'll find all the information there. We go over knife skills and different cooking techniques such as searing, sauteing, roasting, what all the hacks are and the tips. How do you cut different vegetables? And uh, just it's just chock full of information. And you'll be able to also cook along with me, try the different techniques with me. And you'll also have specific recipe videos. So you'll learn how to cook uh, over a dozen different healthy lunches and dinners and breakfasts so that you have a nice, good, solid repertoire of recipes that you can go to uh, as your go-to every week. 
I love it. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate you spending time with me today and sharing your wisdom, your expertise, and really making cooking fun and nutrition easy and um, providing really great content. So uh, y'all follow Maria Marlowe at Maria Marlowe on Instagram. And check out her check out her website mariamarlow.com, and I'll provide the link to the cooking school below. And again, thank you for sharing your time with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Recording intro. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Anna Kabeca. I'm the Girlfriend Doctor. It is my mission and my passion to help women lot. Actually, let me start this again. Right now, we are facing unprecedented times. Stress, uncertainty, fear can be all encompassing, but we are not going to let that happen. I am here to encourage each of you and inspire you as well as give you tools to support you during this time period. I'm always talking about getting keto green and today's guest on the Girlfriend Doctor podcast is going to help us make it even easier and more nutritious. Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Anna Kabeca. I'm the Girlfriend Doctor. It is my mission and my passion to help women live better lives before, during, and after menopause. So, welcome to the Girlfriend Doctor podcast, an intimate place for intimate conversation. And I'm here for you. You can ask me or tell me anything. No shame, no guilt, no apologies. We pull back the curtain on all things related to sexual health, libido, PMS, menopause, you name it, we talk about it. Our goal is to shine a light on your overall wellness, mind, body, and spirit. So let's get started today with Maria Marlowe, who is a, a nutrition expert and fabulous guest today talking to us about nutrition and how we can cook easily and even more nutritious and how we can store our food as well as enhance flavor and quality of our food. Maria Marlowe helps busy women improve their health, reach their ideal weight, and clear up their acne by tailoring their diet to their unique body. She is a certified integrative nutrition health coach. Since opening her private practice in New York City in 2013, she has coached hundreds of people from moms to business executives to celebrities on how to improve their health by improving their diet. She's the creator of the science-backed, doctor-approved, healthy by Marlowe Nutrition Plus cooking courses on her site, mariamarlowe.com. And she's offered our listeners a access into her cooking school for only $99. That link is in the show notes and the code to use is Dr. Anna, Dr. Anna. So she has... Um, a real food grocery guide, as well as hosted the five-star rated Happier and Healthier podcast, which I've been honored to be on as well. Looking forward to sharing her wisdom with you. Let me introduce you to, to Maria. Recording the outro. In this podcast, we really touched on furthering the importance of our greens, including our dark, dark leafy greens. We can store them, keep them, harvest them, grow them, nourish our bodies with them, and enjoy the flavor and taste of them. I was a pleasure to chat with my girlfriend, Maria Marlowe, and have her share her wisdom coming all the way from Dubai, where she's been living for the last year. I 
her cooking class is available in the link below and you can get it for the discounted price, $100 off with using the code Dr. Anna. So don't forget that. We want to get as much greens in our diet. I also want to highlight, highlight again right now how powerful greens are. Mighty Maca Greens, my Mighty Maca Plus superfood combination that includes a combination of greens as well as critically important antioxidants like quercetin, of course, maca, organic kosher maca from the highlands of Peru, and quercetin, which is important for improving energy in our cells, boosting our immune system and making CoQ10, um, turmeric, resveratrol, grapeseed extract, green tea extract, a fiber and enzymes combination, as well as certain fruit extracts that really work together powerfully to work against cytokine storm or inflammatory storms. So important to use our greens and our diet and to supplement as needed with antioxidant superfoods and greens. Can't emphasize how important that is right now. I look forward to your questions and comments and can't wait to hear from you. Don't forget, you can ask me anything. There is no question that I will not at least attempt to answer if I, I can at least know the answer to. So I'm here to bring you support, wisdom, and, and certainly a lot of love on your journey as we go through this time in our life and our history together. Remember, I am here for you and so happy to be your girlfriend doctor. Bye till next time.